Ladies and gentlemen, the holidays are almost upon us. And if you're anything like me, you might need some last minute gifts. And maybe you need those gifts to be inexpensive because money does get a bit tight this time of year. Don't worry, here's a great one. It's called a boot jack. I know it doesn't look like much, but it actually does something really great. Let's say you're coming into your house with a heavy armload of something awkward, something that you cannot put down but your boots are wet and muddy, and you just cleaned your house for holiday company. You cannot track all that stuff through your house, but of course, your hands are occupied. So how are you gonna get your boots off? No problem, that's what the boot jack is for. Pull that thing over, slip the heel of one boot into the opening, stand on the other side, and use your full body weight to lever that boot off. Even if it's tied, even if it's really tight, you'll still be able to get it off. Then do the other one, kick everything to the side, walk into your house, you don't have to put your stuff down, your floors stay clean, it's fantastic. Last minute Christmas gift solved. Oh, that's, uh, that's, that's not the end of the video. Don't leave. I have got a bunch of ideas for making fast, inexpensive projects using wood you've already got laying around. If you'd like to make the boot jack that I just showed, stick around to the end of the video where I've got a holiday surprise for all of my viewers. But if you make furniture as a hobby, consider giving furniture as a gift. It doesn't have to be a huge project. Think about simple staked stools and benches like this one. Staked construction is where the legs just go straight through the top. The three-legged version with a round seat is just a milking stool. People have been making these for hundreds of years and they're really simple. I made this one in my backyard with a handful of tools, no workbench, entirely out of construction scraps, and it's great. I use it down here in the shop all the time, but mm, not exactly fine household furniture. No problem. Here's the same stool in just a slightly nicer version. I used oak for the legs and gave them an elegant taper, and the whole thing has a polyurethane finish, so it fits in much more nicely upstairs. My wife keeps this in her office, and she loves it, but I still just used construction, two by sixes for the top, scrap wood for the legs. It was all stuff I had sitting around. It took me about a day. Now, if you'd like to go from three legs to four legs, you automatically graduate to making a bench. Same basic idea, still construction lumber, still very easy. This is the three tool bench that I made a couple of years ago. I made it using a hatchet, a saw, and a drill, and then I sanded it, and I also polyurethane this one so it would look a little nicer upstairs. My family literally uses this one every single day, and they don't mind the slightly rustic appearance. You can make these as refined or as simple as you want. They're fast, and they're super cheap. I know, you're thinking, okay, okay, those are great, but I need a few gifts that are a little bit smaller and maybe, maybe a little more white collar? No problem. This is a true story. My wife works in a small office with five other people, and one year, near Christmas, we we're having breakfast, and she says to me, Rex, I don't have anything to get my coworkers. And I said, no problem. By the time you get home from work today, I'll have a gift for every single one of them. And I don't think she totally believed me when I said that, but it was time for her to go to work. And when she came home, I had made seven business card holders, a lot like this one. You can tell the idea is very basic. I started with a block of wood. I made a pair of saw cuts. I used a table saw, but you could use a hand saw for this. And then I rounded over those edges. You could use a router or a hand plane. It really doesn't matter. And then to keep the business cards from sliding off, I drilled and inserted a couple of steel pins right here. Here's a couple shots of the finished product. You can see how that steel shined up really nicely and made a good contrast with the warmer tones of the wood. To bring out the life in that cherry, I used a shellac finish. It was super quick, it dried the same day, so they really were done when she got home from work. Now, if you can't do a project like this, because maybe you don't have steel to use for the pins, you can make an all wooden version. Here's an earlier business card holder I did, entirely out of walnut, and you can tell it's just two saw cuts, I chiseled out the waste in the middle, I beveled everything with a hand plane, it was really a piece of cake. I think anybody who does woodwork ends up with scraps like this. Chunky, but sort of little scraps. They're so nice, we can't bear to throw them away, but what are you gonna do with them? Well, this is what you're gonna do with them. Now, 
If you're a woodworker, chances are you have woodworker friends. And if you need to get them gifts, well, everybody likes little shop-made tools because they're useful and they really do show you care. Think about giving one of your friends a nice little wooden tri-square like this one. It doesn't just look pretty. I genuinely use this all the time in my work. I prefer wooden squares for a lot of operations. And then, of course, everybody needs marking gauges. And commercial marking gauges tend to fall into two categories, expensive or crappy. And the ones you can make in your own shop don't have to be either. They can be cheap and be good. Here is the fish head gauge I made about a year ago. It's great for marking long distances. I've also got this Japanese cutting gauge that has a blade in it instead of a pin. The scores a really nice line for rabbiting and other work like that. You could make a set of winding sticks. Here's a pair I made out of some scrap sapele that was too small to do anything with, but they're fantastic winding sticks. And I also have a video on how to make Andre Rubeau's winding sticks. They have these great little feet on them. They do a bunch of tricks that normal winding sticks don't do. In fact, I have videos and plans for making all of this stuff and a bunch of other shop-made tools, and I will talk about those more at the end of the video. All these grown-up gifts are very nice, but come on. The kids need something too. Back during quarantine, I had my daughter down into the shop and we made this rubber band gun together. It was a super fun project. You can see it's very simple. A couple scraps of wood, a couple of clothes pins, nothing to it. And it was something that an eight year old could actually help with. So we had a great time. I made a video about that. I will link to it down in the description. And of course, I also have a little nephew. And like a lot of young boys, like me at his age, he is obsessed with weapons. So every Christmas, I make him a weapon out of wood. I've done a sword, and I've done a flail in the spiked ball thing, uh, and a couple of years ago, I did a fire axe. So here's the fireman's axe that I made for my nephew. I made one for my daughter, too. And, uh, you know, this looks like it was probably a hard project, but it wasn't at all. I just went on the internet and found a picture of a generic fire axe, and I blew it up in Photoshop and printed it out, and then I just traced it onto a couple pieces of wood. I had a separate piece for the handle and one for the head. I bandsawed these out. I used a spoke shave to shape the handle, put a little taper on the head, uh, spray painted both of them, and then there's just a dowel holding them together, glued them together, and I had these two wonderful gifts. I admit my daughter does not play with hers very often, which is why it still looks so new, but my nephew's is nicely beat up because it's gotten a lot of use. This might look like a tough project, but it's really not. A couple of scraps, JPEG off the internet, some spray paint, you can do this too. Even though you've only got a couple of weeks until the holidays, even though you might be broke and just have some scrap wood sitting around, you can still make nice things for your friends and your family. And I want to help you. If you'd like to make simple stuff like the boot jack, you can check out my new book, Everyday Woodworking. It is the simplest, most basic guide to getting started in the craft that I could possibly write, and you can get going using 12 inexpensive hand tools. The book is available everywhere you get books, and I will link to it down in the description. Now, for almost every other project I showed in this video, I've got plans, and I want to make them easy for you for the holidays. So I am putting all of my plans on sale 50% off until Christmas. That's 50% off everything, including our huge plan bundles, which have a bunch of plans in them and are already at a huge discount, and we're taking another 50% off of those. And you know, you shouldn't have to buy my book just to make something like the boot jack. So we made a set of plans just for the boot jack, and we are going to give those away for free. Just a little thank you for everybody who's been watching the videos all year long and contributing and making this channel successful. Thank you. Here's a little free gift. Go on over to rexkruger.com slash store, get the free plans, get the discounted plans, get yourself a little something. The holiday season is stressful and you deserve something too. Anyway, thanks for watching. We'll see you next week.